Hello. In this short video, I'd like to talk a bit more about the research process and especially the typical steps involved in quantitative research and the analysis thereof. And there's, of course, various ways of doing this. So this is just one possible take of it. I think at the beginning, it really helps to be clear on what your actual research question is. What do you really want to study and why do you want to study it? Are there specific predictions, hypotheses? And if so, where do they really come from? So what is the reason you're doing this research? And this includes both, okay, your own motivation. I think this is really crucial. So you really have the stamina and the excitement to really do the project. And also, what is the motivation in terms of contribution to the literature? So is there a gap in the literature? What's known so far? What is not known? Where do you contribute? Where could this contribute? And so this is the contribution to knowledge, basically, or to science, to research. But there can also be the applied contribution. There might be an applied problem, a applied challenge, things you're trying to improve, like the process, for example. Another important step is, of course, identifying the independent variable. If it's more correlation research, they're also called predictive variables and the de dependent variables, which in correlational research or non-experimental or quasi-experimental research are also called response variables. So basically what I'm man manipulating, these are the independent variables and what you're measuring, so these are the response or dependent variables. And how do you actually me measure that? What kind of data type are these? And once you collected the data, I really suggest to always look at the raw data table, which means this could just be the raw um, text file, CSV file, whatever you have. Just really take a look to see whether anything's fishy is off. There might be some outliers. There might be additional comments in there. So really take a look at this. Um, and same thing when once you load it up into your statistics software, take a look at the actual raw data file and plot it in a fairly, or show it, analyze it in a simple way, just to get, get an overview, like looking at the distributions, for examples. Now, if you have data files, I suggest to, as much as possible, use the so-called long format. So basically where you have each condition, each participant and so on in one long row. So that's why it's called long. So it's basically vertical or uh, portrait mode, if you like and then each dependent variable is also one column. Um, and for some analysis, you might need the white format. So if you use jump, then you, could, you can use the table split and stack to convert between long and white format. Next thing that's really important is to check that all the variables are really properly declared and named. They really make sense. Make sure the, the ordering is correct and that you check the modeling type um, because this can really lead to a lot of issues later on. So make it a habit to check on that very early on. One thing I always suggest is to do a raw data plot very early on. So raw meaning you literally see every single data point. If you use something like jump, this uh, should be quite easy. Uh, so play around with different ones until you really feel like you get a good sense of the data, you understand the kind of data you really have. And this is also a good way to check whether there might be anything strange in there, any errors, maybe accidental copy and paste it, who knows what. But this can really help to avoid lots of issues later on if you have uh, NA data, non-applicable, um, error-coded data, and so on. One of the next things that can make sense is really to check the distributions, check for normality. Um, you can do this step, of course, before the raw data plot as well, but it can help to, to look at the raw data first, just in case you have any weird things, any outliers. But yeah, once you start checking the distribution, you'll also see whether there's any non statistical data, maybe there's something missing. And yeah, check for normality. You'll need this later on anyways, but it helps to do this early on. And if you have any weird data points in Jump, for example, you can select them either in the table or in the plot or in just about anything. And you'll see it both in whatever plot you have and whatever table. So this can be quite useful. Then next step is really, okay, you probably want to do some inferential statistics. 
And what I suggest is really, unless you, you really have a super simple design or have a lot of experience, to really use one of these decision tables. Like here's, for example, one that Andy Field created, where the idea is really you look at a structured process of figuring out, okay, what of the many different examples and possible statistical analysis do you want by determining, okay, what is your outcome variable? Do you have one or multiple? What's the type of outcome variable or dependent variable? Is it continuous or categorical? And th this way you go through this decision tree, how many predictor variables or independent variables uh, do you have? What type is the predictor? Is it continuous or categorical? And if it's categorical, how many categories do you have? Is it two or more of two? And then is it basically within or between subject designs? So basically, are these different categories or entity, uh, are these different entities the same or different? So uh, for human participant data, you would often distinguish between within subject and between subject. Within subject is when everybody basically does all the different conditions. If, for example, you're in agriculture, that might be your plot. So in this plot, you might have all the different plants you're investigating. Um, and this way you basically come up with the specific test that you can use. And here, for example, there's some other assumptions if some of the linearities of the linear model are not satisfied. So what you can do after that is, well, basically, once you know what you want to do, what kind of statistics to run, run it. Of course, check all the assumptions and turn on, do the corrections, whatever's needed. Um, as needed, run post hoc test contrast to address specific sub questions. Calculate effect size because it's really important that uh, to not just report, okay, there is a significant effect, but really, does it matter how big is the effect? Is it meaningful or not? The p value doesn't tell you. That's where the effect size comes really in. And this is probably a good time to start creating summary data plots. So you can create them from either just about any independent variables. If you have a lot of different data, a lot of different effects, uh, one thing you can do to reduce the amount of data plots you need to create is really only focus on visualizing the actually significant main and interaction effects. So basically highlighting the things where you did find a significant effect and only reporting the other ones as text. And throughout the whole process, really make sure to save everything, save any kind of scripts you created and jump. You can, for example, save them to the data table or to uh, directly to the file, to a journal. Make sure you save whatever relevant outputs you have. That could be the data plots, it could be the statistical analysis results, any kind of scripts in jump. You can save them to a journal. So each software has their own ways to save these. And of course, make sure you really document things and name things in a way that is clear. So later on, you don't wonder which of the different version one, two, three, four, five you to actually use, but it's clearly labeled what it is, what you did in what order, so you can reproduce it later. This is really crucial, even more so if there's more than one person involved in the research, all of them should really be able to go back to the data and this can happen quite a bit. For example, once you submit your study to a journal or to a conference, they might uh, get back to you with some review comments and requesting a reanalysis. Or if, especially if you want to create an open access repository uh, of your data, then you kind of need to do this part anyways. But really make sure even years down the road, you would be able to reanalyze your own data and try to automatize as much as possible, of course. Then, of course, export things in a meaningful format. So, for example, for plots, I would definitely recommend using vector graphics. So, no J uh, JPEG or PNG, but really vector graphics like PDF, EPS, SVG, whatever makes most sense for you. So, uh, you have really high resolution, well, basically infinite resolution because it's vector graphics. But also, in case there are some minor things, for example, you need to uh, switch some names or change colors, you can do this in a vector editing program like Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever you like. And of course, write things up. Write things up in a scholarly manner. That's a whole different tutorial on how to do this. But yeah, there's a lot of advice out there on uh, how to do this. 
yeah, I hope this little overview was helpful. Feel free to give me any feedback. I'm available at ispacelab.com. Thanks so much.